Hi everyone, my name is James and I'm an account manager here at AWS. And we're so glad to have you joining us today here at the Startup Central. If you're watching this, you're probably working at a startup or simply curious about how startups are leveraging AWS managed services to focus on growth and reduce cost. In this session, I'll first cover what are the essential ingredients for a startup to scale, as well as challenges that are preventing them from growing faster. We'll then take a look at AWS managed services and hear from a startup speaker on how it has helped them scale exponentially. Here at AWS, we want to help every startup scale their business on the cloud by equipping builders with the right tool that they need to experiment and innovate more quickly and frequently. However, CIOs say that 80% of developer time is spent on operations and maintenance of application, and only 20% of the time is actually spent on innovation. That said, we've asked startups the same question and summarized the feedback we've received into five main points on what startups really need. The birth of every startup starts from innovation, and it's a constant priority regardless what stage of growth they are at. Startups want to focus on initiatives with high business impact and growth, and not the critical yet undifferentiated tasks like daily infrastructure and security management. Speaking of security, startups want to build their application in a secure and compliant environment, especially if they're processing confidential data or operating in a regulated industry. Attaining global compliance standards like PCI, HIPAA, SOC, and ISO can also help startups earn the trust of their customers and better align to compliance requirements of large global companies. However, attaining these compliance certifications require a high investment of time and resources, even if given the right expertise. As startups scale, keeping costs optimized is always a focus of every customer. But what a lot of startups don't realize, cost optimization should be an ongoing exercise and not a one-time effort especially when the startup is growing rapidly, so will their cost. And many customers lack the resources to put this in practice on a regular basis. That's why having a dedicated high-touch support is critical for startups as they continue to grow. Last but not least, startups want to continue using AWS services that are on demand without going into long-term contracts, just like your utility bills. To achieve the points from the previous wish list, Hiring seems to be the first go-to solution for many startups, but cloud talent is hard to come by and quickly disappears. The hiring processes also take up a huge investment from a time and cost perspective, not to mention the fixed cost once the headcount is successfully hired. Training and ramp up time for your new hire is also a challenge, especially since startups usually don't have a dedicated team for training and enablement. It typically takes one to three months before a team member is fully equipped to take on critical tasks like infrastructure and security management. Achieving and maintaining security and compliance standards also require a huge investment of time and cost. This is usually too expensive for startups as it's simply not part of their core product or solution. Very often, startups are experts at innovation but lack the experience in implementing operational security and compliance requirements that are needed to support the business. As it's difficult or can be confusing early on as they look to assemble all the various AWS offerings into a cohesive and coherent, secure and compliant framework to deploy their application. Lastly, we know startups move really quickly and priorities change due to the business needs, leaving the critical yet mundane tasks such as cost optimization improving security and compliance, or addressing scalability and reliability concerns at the bottom of the to-do list. This majority of this work is not differentiating to their core business, which should be constant innovation to better serve their customers and capture more market share for high growth. So we've built a solution to help our customers focus on growth and initiatives that bring higher impact to their business, while ensuring applications are built on the most secure, compliant and cost-optimized environment, we build AWS Managed Services, or AMS for short. Let's take a look at what AMS is at a high level by focusing on six key areas. Starting from the bottom left, AMS comes out of the box with a secure and compliant landing zone. That is PCI DSS, ISO, SOC, GDPR, HIPAA, and high trust compliant. 
Think of a landing zone as a carved out area within AWS that is built based on the AWS best practices and framework. This allows the startup to have a secure and scalable baseline infrastructure to begin deploying and building their applications and solutions. In true AWS fashion, we are filled by automation. Everything we've done with the service to date has been focused on moving the critical but undifferentiated tasks away from human hands to automation. Tasks such as monitoring, logging, alerting, security, and compliance management, change management, incident management, OS patching, backups, and the list goes on. Over 95% of these tasks are automated with our machine learning, leaving the remaining higher level tasks that matters to the business to cloud experts. Speaking of cloud experts, we give our customers access to named individuals that they can contact round the clock whenever they need help or consultation regarding AWS services. This allows startups to use AMS as a standard of excellence as they start to build those cloud competencies in-house. The same team of cloud experts continuously and consistently work with the customer to identify ways to optimize the environment and operating model. This is to ensure customers' investments are fine-tuned to what they actually need to consume. Think about right-sizing EC2 instances so that the deployed infrastructure matches what the workload needs to run efficiently. Strategies like this are documented in a monthly business report that is shared proactively with the customer. No vendor lock-in refers to the fact that with the exception of endpoint protection, we've built our platform leveraging readily available AWS tools. So think of tools like CloudWatch, CloudTrail, and Trusted Advisor, all the tools that are available in non-AMS managed AWS environments. Finally, AMS is a month-to-month consumption-based service. It mirrors what AWS have done with the utility compute model. We want customers to have the same flexibility within their managed environments, just like spinning up an EC2 instance. We want to help customers scale up and down depending on the usage patterns and use AMS for as long as they want to use it and not be held to an arbitrary contract term. This allows customers to use us to support migrations, accelerate innovation and improve security baselines. Again, at the customer's discretion, they can use AMS where it makes sense for them. So, if we really look at what AMS covers, it automates key core areas required for cloud operations. In short, the boring stuff. We handle provisioning and onboarding of the stacks into the environment. We handle security and compliance management. We make sure all the tooling associated with operations in the cloud is launched and deployed against the environment when the infrastructure is provisioned. Every change is monitored and logged, so our startups are ready for audits with a few clicks. We provide our customers insights and cost optimization pathways on the running environments, following up with monthly business reports and action items on where you can reduce your AWS spend. We handle critical tasks like OS level patching, backups, and continuity in terms of snapshots. We handle and coordinate all change management, and we become an API endpoint for customers' ITSM processes, business flows, and rules to request infrastructure provisioning and incident requests. We handle service integration that is a two-layered integration point. First, we handle integration with a growing ecosystem of AMS-managed AWS services. Second, we continuously improve our interfaces that our customers use to integrate ITSMs such as ServiceNow. So how does AMS fit into the overall life cycle for a startup? AMS is responsible for infrastructure, operations, compliance, and security, up to and including the patch OS layer. We take a set of AWS services like EC2, S3, and wrap that around curated AWS management tools, such as Trusted Advisor, CloudWatch, CloudTrail, and our change management system, to offer customers an automated infrastructure operational platform that is compliant and secure to deploy and build their application. Above the OS layer, here is where we look to the customer or partners or combination of both to deliver application operations and development. Here is what a typical customer journey looks like. Onboarding is a three-phase process where AWS creates the AMS landing zones and the customer simply deploys the application on the landing zone. This can be done through an AMS partner 
if the customer lacks the resources or expertise to do it themselves. Once the workloads are on the AMS lending zone, that's when the operation mode kicks in. So what is the business value to startups? It's really about accelerating the technical and operational maturity by providing out-of-the-box foundational architecture complete with operational tools and processes. Startups don't have to worry about building from the ground up and leave the heavy lifting to AWS. We help reduce operational costs or help startups redirect their tech resources to innovation. Customers experience a 30% cost optimization from resource cost avoidance and 25% ongoing operational and infrastructure savings. We also accelerate a startup's security and compliance journey with infrastructure that is built out of the box with security best practices and compliance certifications. All of this drives back into letting the startup focus on innovation. By automating the mundane tasks and operations, startups can experiment with more advanced technology and AWS services. That lets them build net new application and drives agility and growth. As startups go through this process of onboarding and continuous operations and improvement, AMS helps startups begin to build muscles around making subtle changes to architecture and constructions of infrastructure stacks to support workloads that drive real value into the business. Lastly, AMS helps startups accelerate sales conversations and shorten sales cycles with security and compliance in check, helping them earn trust from their customers at the same time accelerate maturity of tech stacks, which may positively impact conversations with VCs or when you're raising your next round of funding. Nothing speaks louder than customers' stories. So let us take a look at a couple of customer case studies. Carol is a startup based in Singapore that provides the largest marketplace for pre-owned cars in Southeast Asia. And since onboarding on AMS, they have increased their internal SLAs for their website to an average of 99.99% uptime, even when traffic to the site increases. Through cost optimization with our AMS cloud experts, Carol has also reduced their AWS spend by 50% and accelerated their journey to meet PCI DSS compliance. DTRAC is a startup based in Singapore that focuses on transport management and e-proof of delivery solutions across 50 countries. Since they have onboarded on AMS, the startup have successfully redirected 30% of their tech resources that was previously focused on operations to development. This enabled them to reduce their development time from four weeks to less than a week. The AMS out-of-the-box governance, security, and compliance features also helped DTRAC shorten their sales cycle from six months to a few weeks by meeting their customers' security and compliance requirements. So, you've heard a lot about how AMS works and solve customer challenges. Now, I'm going to turn it over to one of our customers that have worked together for the longest to share why they chose AMS and how it has helped them grow and scale. It is with my greatest pleasure to introduce to you Sylvain Datsa, CTO at Ancilio. Thanks, James. I'm glad to be here today to bring some insight on how AMS can benefit to startups such as Ancilio. We'll first start by some introduction and history about Ancilio to get a better picture of our current situation, explore the challenges that we are facing, to then jump onto AMS, getting to understand it better. We will see how it does help us through some use cases and review its benefits. Finally, we'll project ourselves back to the future before concluding. So imagine you're on Mars with a Perseverance rover. Unfortunately, you find out that your return ticket was canceled. Will you wait several years to come back? See, that is why you should always get a travel insurance with your ticket. And this is where we come into play. Ancilio was started late 2016. We're headquartered in Singapore, and our objective is quite simple. Enable any insurer to distribute their products through any digital platform and ecosystem. We mostly focus on embedded insurance products that can be easily purchased as bite-sized add-on of a distribution partner core product. It took us only nine months to build the core of our platform. Having worked at Global Insurer ourselves did definitely help to be very fast. In 2017, we signed our first Global Insurer, 
And three years later, we are issuing life policies in 19 countries through 18 top three distribution partners. 2021 is an important year for NCDO. We have two objectives moving forward. Onboard at least two global insurers as client of our platform and expand our product offering to the bank assurance channel. Let's see a few numbers that illustrate our path better. If you add math, don't worry, these are simple to digest, I promise. We have launched 20 new integrations on the past years, this through six partnerships with insurance providers, banks, and other distribution solutions. We receive 18 million calls on our API throughout the days from regions all over the globe. Our system boasts a 4 9 availability, and we are always working to add some more. We have also seen a 150% increase in revenue year to year. We are profitable, and we have received zero investment. FinTech do face strong regulated environments. This is part of the deal, and clearly something very important to us. What matters is not only to have some system in place running, but also to ensure they do remain secure, available, and operational at all time. We are currently following compliance requirements given to us by our partners from the payment card industry and local insurance requirements. We realize that keeping systems safe and having 24 seven resources available for security monitoring was not going to be simple. AWS has provided some really great tools on all these compliance and security matters, but sometimes these also go beyond system only. We do need qualified people available around the clock for security monitoring as required by compliance. The team is also involved in regular auditing tasks, internally and externally, from auditors such as QSA for PCI DSS. But we want to focus to what matters for the business. Building more features, growing our solution. The past year, we have pushed 100 additions to the existing system and 17 major features, including automated renewal of insurance policies, claims handling with OCR and detection of key information, and many more. In order to continue delivering even more we needed some way to reduce work spent on infrastructure maintenance alone. So to better understand how we work towards this goal, here is how we started our solution. This is of course a simplified version of what we propose, but you can clearly see here a very classic setup using servers across different availability zones, load balancer, and bastion server. This works, but how do we maintain the server, patch them, bring new software on it. How to protect them from attacks, including insiders or accidents, if for instance, someone decided to open the Bastion server to the world? How do we ensure our costs are always kept to the minimal? And many more questions. Simply put, how, we, how can we evolve from this kind of setup into something more modern? Well, we do need resources for that. But if the team is busy on maintenance and monitoring, how can we modernize? Enters 2020 and the discovery of AWS managed services. At first, it did not look like something we would even consider, as we are not an enterprise trying to migrate to the cloud. We are already in there, and we saw it may not fit our budget constraints. But it's quickly proved to be the solution we are seeking. First, the budget issue disappeared when we learned we could go to an AWS partner to fit the requirements. Secondly, this AWS partner led us through all the steps for the migration to EMS, accelerating some things that will have taken at least a year to just a few months. Finally, it solved our pain points and went the step beyond by separating key concepts such as network control, log management, security, access control, etc. So let's talk about the shared landing zone. The force is strong with this one. 
that should be the master account. This is not something we control. It is fully managed by AWS, but basically define rules on who can access what. Then we got the shared services account. So this account will contain the Active Directory, Bastion host, and endpoint securities that are used to manage our system. The network account connects our offices to the managed account, but also all our connection from source account to the internet. Security is well taken care of, centralizing all its related operations, and guard duty will send notification when something is worth being checked. The log archive account hosts all logs from the various environments and is a place to go for forensic activities. And yes, if you fancy it, you can even send your coffee cup count there. Why not, after all? Finally, we got here all our application, workload, etc., with a few more to operate from fully managed by EMS or full control as customer managed. Access to the shared services account, security, network, and log archive require special privileges. The application accounts are accessed using different units that can be defined on our end. Being compliant does require quite an extensive checklist of items to be configured, validated, and audited regularly. On AWS, we do use the following services. EC2 for our servers, RDS, and particularly Aurora for our database, S3 bucket, always useful to store objects, KMS for encryption of many components of our infrastructure, transfer for our SFTP needs, SQS for messaging between our various system components, CloudTrail, well, because we care and want to know what happened in our accounts. CloudWatch that provide useful metrics and log visibility, but also many more. CloudFormation, Lambda, SNS. So for our compliance, we were previously fully responsible of setting things up properly and performing control procedure of this to ensure all setup was as expected. Well, this does take some precious time. What all we want is to focus on our application. Fortunately, EMS does provide right out of the box infrastructure compliance for PCI DSS, ISO 27.1, CI's benchmark, GDPR, and many more. This does not mean we can just let go as NCDO must also comply as a company to see standard, but it definitely removes some workload. Another example will be related to the role that each of us assume within the company. With limited people available, we did have some resources assuming several roles that could be considered conflicting. So let's see here what will happen if a network administrator goes rogue and decides to modify a security group of one of our applications, allowing unrestricted inbound traffic. Right. We do have some way to protect ourselves, such as network access control list on the subnet, AWS IAM with policy we can grant our network administrator, maybe even allowing only the manager to proceed such changes, maybe even using a cloud formation template that would generate a change set to be approved. But when you manage a very small team, you may need to let them accumulate roles which can increase these mistakes. You come to the situation as if you were a restaurant owner having the ability to give yourself a Michelin star. That's great, but would you appreciate if I was opening such restaurant? Thanks to the enforced change management process with AMS, even a change request from the highest position within the company does pass through a review of the change by security teams before approval, and therefore, will be prevented from execution if considered risky. This greatly reduces the surface attack and brings some peace of mind, knowing AWS teams got our back on this. Going into the benefit of EMS. First, we love robots. Well, not quite yet. 
especially since that famous, I'll be back. But when we can avoid having people sitting and hitting the refresh button, or waiting for something to happen, we prefer to automate things. And AMS clearly saved us recruitment of dedicated 24 seven team for monitoring availability and security of our systems. This also comes with huge benefit to our SLAs, since we know that if a system experiences issues, EMS is looking at it and will assist us in making sure the system goes back in way less time. It will take me to say, how much wood will a wood chuck chuck if a wood chuck wood chuck wood? Did I get that right? EMS also help us save cost. We have found more than a third of our expenditure on workload was saved when moving to EMS due to the cost optimization technique applied in there. Also, as much as I enjoy clicking on the button of my mouse and typing on keyboard, I maybe never fully appreciated filling checklists and for compliance. EMS, with its built-in compliance program, makes it easy to fill with ready-to-use reports. That's a lot of time saved from filling security checklist documentation. And what we definitely appreciate the most, we get our team back to build the next great systems instead of part-timing on security and monitoring. EMS is not only a beautiful solution that we should take and from there stop innovating, relying on it. This is just a starting point for us. Leveraging its benefits, we have already initiated an internal program for our teams. The purpose? Get them to know more on AWS. And on this, we are more than happy to have so many resources available online for the team to learn from and get certified. We also want to leverage as much as possible the knowledge of AWS experts available to us to review our design and validate solution. From here, we expect to modernize more of our application, learning from the MS setup and design new solutions that will accelerate our growth. We do have already many internal projects using serverless and the SAM model, containerizing our system, and applying machine learning through the use of solutions such as Amazon Textract and Comprehend. Finally, we will extract insight and proceed analytic from this new system with the creation of a data lake, collecting more metrics that can help us deciding on the future route for Ancelio. We are very proud of our system and what we built. And thanks to AWS, we won't stop accelerating our growth. And from here, I will hand it over back to you, James. Thanks, Yuvan. So we've shared a ton of great use cases on how AMS can help your startup focus on innovation and reduce cost. For more resources on AMS, please do check out the AMS website for more information or reach out to your account team to schedule a technical deep dive to see how you can get started immediately. Thank you again for joining us. And we really appreciate your feedback so that we can better understand the topics and services you would like to know more about. So please do take the time to fill out our survey and let us know what you think.